<laughs> we are doing something cool this morning. We have an Audi with a misfire. We did look at this car yesterday. Pat, Jim, thank you. Sorry to steal the car away from you for a little bit, but I wanted everybody else to see this. The next chapter that we're going into is ignition systems. And we're gonna be doing the inputs first, and then we're gonna be going to the output side and coils and controls and all of that. But we have a vehicle with a misfire, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to use this one to teach you guys how to do coil current testing. That's really the primary focus of this video would be coil primary current ramp analysis on a waste spark ignition system. This is a waste spark system. There are slight differences when we do distributor ignitions and coil over plug ignition systems. But again, the focus on this one will be waste spark. Okay. Um, a, a lead into this is we had a misfire for cylinder one and cylinder six, correct? And then we also had a code for primary control, I believe, of coil number one. So misfire on cylinder one, misfire on cylinder six. When, I, when the guy brought the car in, he said that just the light was on and the car runs fine. That's what he told me. I think you guys were right there when, that's what he said. I mean, then we pulled the car in, Pat, you pulled the car in, you felt it misfiring. It was misfiring constantly. I think we shut it off and restarted it. Did the misfire go away uh, momentarily? When I was bringing it in, I was turning here to go in, the, and then the misfire quit and the light went out. Huh. Well, hopefully we can recreate it because since we did our checks yesterday, we pulled the car, uh, we did the checks out there, and I pulled the car in last night. It was not misfiring when we brought it in. Anyway, well, hopefully we can recreate it. If we can't recreate it again, we'll use this lesson to learn how to do coil current ramping that's what we're our focus is on a waste spark so one in six misfires then we have an oxygen sensor malfunction could an oxygen sensor malfunction cause a misfire type situation yeah, absolutely i've seen it many times you have an o2 that is falsely fixed rich and the computer takes all the fuel away and you can end up with i've seen a v8 engine with a four cylinder misfire from that same scenario so half of the engine getting no fuel, lean misfire. Yes, you can get misfire codes from faulty O2s. What about our air injection system, our air pump? Are we worried about these as far as the misfire goes? That's what, what I'm trying to connect the dots here right now is where do we start, right? Air pump, bottom of the list for me right now. Um, you can have issues with an air pump where it's pumping air upstream of the O2 in closed loop causing a false lean condition. The computer then in reaction over fuels the system. Not the case here. Something to think about, but that's the bottom of my list. Here's what makes me ignore the O2, ignore the air pump stuff. That code right there, the one that's highlighted. This ignition coil power output electrical malfunction. That's the one that makes me start there because an O2 can cause a misfire, an air pump can cause issues, probably not misfiring. That one is something wrong with the electrical part of an ignition coil. So then we look at the car, three different coil packs, they're waste spark, and we have one main plug with five wires going to it. So that's the system. And really what I wanted to point out with an ignition coil power output number one is following the plug wires. They're actually numbered. This is the number one plug wire, which goes to this coil. And then if you look at the opposite side, which is this one, it happens to be its companion, which is number six. So that's pretty cool that one and six are on the same coil. That gives us some real good direction. Okay. I'm guessing you're not a big fan of like, well, let's be the well, obviously, it, with a code like this, it is most likely some type of coil malfunction, especially if you have a 1.6 misfire and it's on ignition coil number one. It looks like we have a coil problem, but I have done some of these in the past, and when I edit this, I'll put a link in here for a Ford Expedition with a 5.4 engine that we dealt with a similar situation that ended up having a shorted coil, right? 
based on codes, you can change parts sometimes, but it also had a shorted PCM driver. So when the coil failed, it cooked the driver in the computer. So that's one reason why we still want to check it. Another reason might be, Adam, and I, I talked to uh, Pat and Jim about this yesterday, is a lot of our cars today, the intake manifold covers the ignition coils, especially the back three. Maybe we can get to the front three, can't get to the back three. And I want to develop a test that will allow me to condemn a coil that lives underneath the intake manifold without pulling it apart and, and swapping, swapping parts. Um, I have a video on that that I'm thinking of. I'll put the link in here for that one too. It was on a Lexus and I'm just using a, a little handheld Vantage Pro and I'm doing the test and I was able to identify the shorted coil that was under the manifold on a Lexus. It was one of my first videos that I ever did so it, the, the video quality might not be all that great but the content was good. Okay, so. Just addressing your question, Adam, it's a good one, a valid one. Uh, no, I'm not a fan of right now putting an ignition coil in this. I want to check in. And honestly, this isn't hard to do, especially on this design. It's as simple as coming over to this car, taking a look at what you have, having a basic understanding of the fundamentals of this coil. I know exactly, without looking at a wiring diagram, which wire to connect my amp probe to. I have two fat ones and three skinny ones. The design on this, again, this is without looking up a diagram. We're not gonna do it that way. Let me, let me start with the design for you guys. I did this with Jim and Pat yesterday. Here's the setup with this coil. We have three different coils inside of this. I am absolutely confident that they all share a power feed. And I am also confident that there's going, going to be a shared ground here too. There's a little bit different design here with this being a way spark. Actually, this is very similar to what we're doing with the coil over plug designs today. They just house them all in one unit. Shared ground, shared power, and I'll draw these a different color. Does that make sense? What are we doing with this circuit? That's our primary windings. These are our primary windings. The secondary, I'll just draw the secondary on one of them. The secondary would be wrapped around the primary and there's two towers. So spark is going to leave this one, travel through the block, come back into this one. It's a waste spark system. That's the secondary side. What I drew in red is the primary side. Question so far. That's right. Two fat ones are my power and ground. That's it. I mean, just knowing the internals here, I know that this is the base circuit of the transistors that turn the coils on and off. So those are low current circuits, small gauge wires, where the heavy gauge wire is going to be the grounds and the feed. The computer is going to send small square waves on this. And the cool part about this, and you guys, we did do this yesterday. So in, in fairness, I now know that it, it was around a zero four volt square wave. But I said that before we even looked at this car. And the cool thing about that, knowing ignition designs, this is an Audi. I've never worked on this model ever, but it's the same exact design as say a Honda or a GM, as far as coil control goes. When they put the transistors in here and on, on this design, this ignition module that you're looking at here, this piece that has cooling fins on it, the module is inside of here. It's not really a module. It's just a housing that contains three transistors. There is nothing smart about that circuit. So anytime we use the name module, what I mean by smart is a module can kind of think on its own at times. Power ground, um, circuit board, some logic circuits where it can make decisions and do things where this is just, uh, they, uh, they probably do not call that 
an ignition module. They may call it a power stage or some weird term like that that these European cars would use. Computer sends a small on-off signal to the base of the transistor and then when it turns this guy on, when the voltage is high on the base, we turn the transistor on and we allow flow to go through this coil, through the transistor. I drew that wrong, the grounds, that should be attached up here. Through the transistor and to ground. So again, like you said, Adam, my fat wires are the ones that carry the current. I can go on the feed or the ground to these coils. If I go here, if I put my amp clamp here or here, would I see the same pattern? We just covered this off camera this morning about amperage and control. Can we view amperage on the feed or the control or the ground in this case of a circuit? The answer is yes. So, a problem we're going to have when we do that, we'll, put, we'll hook up channel one as an amperage waveform. A problem we're going to have is, is it just one coil or is it all the coils that we're going to see? If I connect here, am I only going to see one coil or am I going to see all of them? It's all of them. When the computer turns this one on, I'll see that one fire. When the computer turns this one on, it's this one that I'll see, and the same thing up top. When this one turns on, amperage runs through, I will see all three. So what we should see on the screen is, depending on time base, is a pattern like that. One, two, three, one, two, three, and just repeating itself, okay? Just in case we can't recreate this, can I do it in airplane mode? I have the picture on my phone from yesterday. I can't show it to you. I'll show it to you later because I'm recording right now. Did you screenshot it on this one? You did put it on here? Oh, sweet. You are the man, Kyle. All right, now listen. We're gonna, we're gonna duplicate this, hopefully duplicate this today. This is just a, a, uh, a screenshot of our, our issue. Do you see, just focus on the yellow trace here. Do you see um, a ramp, a ramp, a missing ramp, a ramp, a ramp, a missing ramp? You guys see that? So that right there is telling us what, there is no control on that single coil. We can assume, I think accurately, which coil it is, right? Based on our fault codes. We have a coil one primary voltage code we had, and then we had one in six misfires. So we can, we can say that that missing ramp is the number one. This is what we're, go we're going to try to recreate. I wanna do something that's a little bit uh, maybe unorthodox, just to show you how confident I am in circuit design and that I've done stuff like this many, many times and how much it helps in troubleshooting sometimes too. I just need one of you guys' LED test light. Can I get, yes. Do you remember uh, which one was our number one as far as the three wires? The one furthest yeah. to the front of the car? Yeah. Okay. Okay, what I wanna show you guys, I'm confident right now that this coil is still functional based on just pulling the car in. I'm going to uh, just hold the test light here to let the spark give it somewhere to go. If you take a, a test light and uh, go to battery positive, this is a uh, an in this is a LED test light, and we definitely want to use an LED doing this. Um, I I'm confident in the test I'm doing, and again, uh, if you guys watch this later, I'll put a link to another video. It was on a Nissan where I show how to do this on a coil over plug system. That if you have a coil that's not firing you can actually substitute the computer signal and make the coil fire. This, this should fire the coil. Unless this car doesn't have power on the ignition coil with the key on, that would, that would change what we're doing here. If I, don't, if I don't have power here, then I can't do it. This, um, this isn't going to work because it looks like I do not have power here with just the key on. 
this is set up like a Chrysler in that the power feed for this coil goes to my fuel pump relay. So how is the feed going to work? It's going to work just like the fuel pump is. We need an RPM signal. That's kind of cool, we just talked about that. So if I, if I jump my own power to this right now, I'm going to make the fuel pump run. Don't wanna do that. No, I don't care. It's, oh, not, okay. it's not gonna hurt anything. If you just held it there while we cycled the key, you want like the priming? Ah, oh, maybe. Let's see if we get a prime, smart guy. Then I'd have to do it like all at the same time though. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I'd have like two seconds to show you I can, well, it'd be maybe a little safer. Okay, this test light's going to ground. Um, is that in the shot? Yeah, okay, yeah. can you um, turn the key off and then back on? Yep. We can't do it this way. I want to make this work, <laughs> hold on. There's some issues with doing this, and the issue is my jumper wire may not carry the current that is necessary for the fuel pump and the coil. And in, in a worst case scenario here, what's going to happen is I'm gonna burn up my jumper wire. This should run the pump and power the coil. Okay, so I got power to my coil all the time now. Don't worry about the sound you hear, that's just the fuel going through the fuel rail. Okay, try the test again. You scared you a little Ooh. bit there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it did scare me a little bit. This is what am I doing with the LED light on my right? What am I energizing? That's awesome. Yeah, Let's do it a bunch. <laughs> a thousand RPM. <laughs> okay, here, go, go sit back down. I wanna to talk to you guys for a second. What were we doing? What was I energizing with that test light? Where was I in this picture for that test? You were energizing the control wire. I was. I was on, uh, let's call it this top one, my, my coil number one. Let's call this coil one in my picture, okay? And I was taking an LED test light and I was touching on the control to, uh, to battery positive. Why was I using positive? Because I know that the computer sends a small positive voltage signal to the base of this transistor to turn it on. So when I touched it on there, that's not when spark occurred, it's really when I let it go. It was on and then off. It was, I know it happened so fast, kind of hard to tell. Touch the light on, we then energize the base, which con connects the collector and emitter circuit, allows flow through the transistor, test light off, transistor off, field collapses, spark comes out of the coil. Awesome. So if you held it, it wouldn't just sit there and If I held it on there, what I would do is most likely burn up the transistor and the coil because, because it would keep it on for too long of a period of time uh, by the way, for ignition systems, that's known as our dwell time. Our dwell time is the amount of time we energize the primary circuit. It's the amount of time current flow travels through the primary. Something you need to remember for your ASE test is what dwell time is in an ignition system. So in short, if I held the test light on there, Adam, I would increase my dwell time to a point where I would burn up the coil winding and potentially the transistor itself. Oh, if you just say say you just hold it on there for a quarter of a second or half a second and you hold on for a four second, full second, would you get a bigger spark? Uh, that's a good question. In theory, yes. But in reality, it is only, uh, on the car, you're only talking about five milliseconds that it takes to fully energize that field. So once that field hits saturation, the rest of the time that you energize it, you're just making heat. In, in theory, yes, but in reality, the way this is designed, no, because we will reach saturation in milliseconds. If I hold it there for a half a second, my spark won't be any stronger. I'm just making heat, I'm gonna cook something. Okay, so let's address something else here. I said that this is a zero to four volt square wave, roughly. I'm putting 12 volts to the base of that transistor with a test light. I'm really not. Um, that's why I chose the LED light. There is a certain amount of current that occurs in this circuit, base circuit current. And what's happening with my light is I am getting a very large voltage drop across that bulb. A lot 
bigger of a voltage drop than an, an incandescent light would give me. That would work with an incandescent light. I've done it. But since doing that video where I actually measured the current flow of the light, okay, I, I took the Nissan system and I measured the current flow of my light as I was energizing the base and I measured the current flow of the base and compared the two. You, you guys need to watch that video. You'll understand why I use an LED test light for this. So far in this whole term, what have I been using to energize things? Incandescent, I keep saying, get an incandescent, get an incandescent. You guys are all upset that everybody has LED test lights. And I said, don't be upset. Don't be upset. There's times we need the LED. I just showed it to you, okay? So <clears throat> why is the test important? I don't know. Some may, may argue that the test isn't needed. I think it's cool that I've never worked on an Audi like this or seen this ignition design, and I know exactly how it works because this is all fundamentals. It's, it's the same really on every car. So that's pretty cool. Um, why do we want to use this test? What's the point? When would you want to use it? We know the coil. Well, it could be, yeah, that's right. We know the coil fires now. What if the car came in and that coil was not firing and you didn't have a scope? Could, could we make that signal? And if we can make it fire, how's the coil? How's the transistor? Good. And so our direction would go toward the computer, toward the wiring. So it's a test that's valid. Another one is our coil over plug designs. Oh, uh, this may or may not tie together. Here's, here's a typical three-wire coil over plug design. What do we notice in my little drawing? Is it any different than what we're looking at up top up here? A three-pin coil over plug. Here's one, here's two, the ground, and here's three, the control wire. Isn't it identical yeah. to what we're working on, testing-wise? Other than they're not all tied together. Other than they're not all tied together. They, all share yeah. share they would share the same feed, but externally, not internally, yeah. And they would share the same ground, too, externally. So the, the, the drawing would be each coil would have a shared let's say it's a four cylinder it would be shared like this they would share the ground as well and so you would be able to access here and here to see all of them the wiring to the coils would be separate and then your third wire would be the base circuit for each each of these would have a the four wire ones just have a, a monitoring circuit so they're no different either so the cool thing is what i just showed you up here you can do the same exact thing for any coil over plug design. In fact, any design that you can get to the base circuit of the transistor, you can do that test too. I like that test. That test isn't just necessarily for ignition coils, wouldn't you agree? Couldn't we use that in other applications? Possibly if we can have some type of device that needs to be turned on and we can do it. It just helps with troubleshooting. And it actually gives you a real good perspective of what the computer is doing to the base, doesn't it? Don't you guys have a better visual right now of what the computer is doing to the base circuit of this than you did a few minutes ago? All right. So we break first before I show you the waveforms. Jim, hold on. Yeah, jump in the coil. I did make the fuel pump run, didn't I? It helps to be able to read a wiring diagram. Okay, uh, I'll pause it here, go take a break, and, and we'll pick this up when you come back.